Breaking tonight after the president met late today with a group of Muslim leaders at the White House to discuss what the White House called a range of issues, the administration is now refusing to identify exactly who was there, saying they are, quote, not public officials and deserve their privacy. Chris Steyerwaltz is our Fox News digital politics editor, and he joins me now. So they're, because they're not public officials, we don't get to know who they are. And yet earlier tonight at the White House, he had a group of dreamers, private citizens, all of whom were touted in front of the television cameras and identified. So why don't we get to know who these leaders are? Well, I'm afraid to say I can only think of two possible explanations. One is that the president has a low opinion of some of his countrymen who, despite no evidence that I'm aware of that there are current uh, violence being carried out against Muslim Americans, that by identifying these people, he would make them subject to some sort of an American lynch mob, uh, which would be a pretty low estimation of his countrymen indeed. Or number two, he doesn't want us to know who was there. Mm -hmm. But by my reckoning, it has to be one of those two things. Either he thinks that there's a lynch mob coming or there's some reason he doesn't want us to know who's there. Well, I mean, let's talk about possible suspects, because, I mean, what, number one, we want to know whether care was there. Uh, this organization has been identified as a terrorist by some of our one of our allies and has been very controversial here in the United States. And its support for Hamas, which we also recognize as a terrorist a terror group, has been well documented. So was anybody there from care? We don't know tonight. And then there's Sheikh bin Baya, Chris. A guy yeah. who's been to the White House before. Well, look, here's the deal. We don't have... Uh we can only, we could assume the best, we could assume the worst, but as you point out, the track record is not ideal. When you have a person who has been to the White House before, who is involved with, associated with a group that essentially, that in fact said that it would be right and just for American invaders in Iraq to be killed, uh, when you've got that track record, it would be easy to jump to some very negative conclusions about guy, why the president would keep it secret. Bin Baya is a guy, the State Department tweeted out something he wrote, because now they say he's like educating folks on how to be, you know, how to win the hearts and minds of, of Muslims who would be radicalized. So the, the State Department tweeted out some of his writings not long ago, and then they had to take it down and apologize for doing that. Not long after that, the president went before the United Nations and cited him himself. So, you know, the, the, the president seems to have no trouble citing this man, meeting with this man at the White House, and it's been very controversial, and that, the, that's among the questions. Was he there? Who was there? And so what's really going on here the day after we see this video of, uh, of the this Jordanian pilot being burned to death. I realize this is a preset meeting. Uh, is this, is this, don't we deserve to know more about what was said and to whom? Well, at the very least, we could be spared the sanctimony about transparency from this administration. And as you point out, we uh, this is a crucial moment as it comes to the relationship between Islam and the West, and has been for some time. But right now, we are at the crux of the issue. So we might at least be spared all of the sanctimony that is poured out upon the press about transparency from this administration when they make quite a point of not being transparent. And, and why not just save the time, for goodness sakes? And this is, this is a critical part of the strategy. I mean... The, the Obama White House has said repeatedly what we need to do is rally the hearts and minds, get That's Muslim right. leaders in America and elsewhere to start speaking out against ISIS, you know, speaking out against radicalization and so on. So why can't we know what the messaging was? Let's hear. Britt, why don't you bring the TV cameras in there instead of just in with the dreamers so we can all be a part of the conversation? But also, who does he think, who does the president believe are good emissaries for that message? Who are the individuals? Because while we might not ever know what he said, if we knew who the people were, we would know the kinds of communities and the kind of in individuals that the president wants to empower with his message to go out into the small but growing Muslim American community and carry his message, be his ambassador. Who are the people that he thinks match up with his message? That might tell us something about his message. So it's germane. It's worth knowing. This is not just some abstraction. This is something that can help us understand exactly what it is that the White House is trying to do, because if we know who they're doing it through, we'll know what the message really is. We're going to find out more. There's going to be more questions about this tomorrow, uh, undoubtedly. Chris, good to see you.